Stitchers, I'm back with my stash video for the month of September. You have been warned, this is all stash, nothing else. This will probably be the last stash video I do really, probably until next year. I've been inspired by Mackenzie to revamp my craft storage, my thread storage. What I have at the moment has never been something was never planned. It was just put everything in those boxes and drawers until something better comes along. So I've decided that now is the time uh, in preparation for Operation Threadpool next year as well to sort out my stash in a way that I want it to be organised so to actually spend some money on storage. Because as my sister says, if I have spent all that money on my stash it makes sense to store it properly, which is probably very true. So. For that reason, most of my stash fund will be transferred over to um, sorting out my stash storage instead. So, to make up for that, I seem to have quite a lot of stash laid out to show you. Um, I probably won't go through every single thread, so what I will say is, as I normally do, all the suppliers and people that I mention in this video, I will link to below. So you can, if you see something you like the look of or you want to have a closer look at that particular supplier, you can do so. But before I go into the stash I have bought, I have a few thank yous to say to some very generous stitchers who I know watch my videos. So I want to do that at the beginning to make sure I don't forget. So consequently I may rush through the rest of my stash. So... I don't know really what I have done to deserve such generosity and kindness, but I'm very grateful to a few stitches this month who, for whatever reason, have racked me, random act of kindness, with various things. So there's four stitches that I would like to thank and show you their generosity in what they sent me. So, first of all, um, I received a rack for... Um, KLT charting from a sitter. I don't know, I don't think I mentioned Kim's site before, but I know a few of you are familiar with her website. Kim um, does designs cross stitch charts and she also sells some charts by a few other designers, which predominantly are for using hand dye threads for. Initially, she used to sell her charts through Michelle at Jodra Designs, but then she branched out on her own. So her website is KLT charting and there's of course a Facebook book. Facebook group. I know that Randy is stitching the Jigsaw Elephant from Kim and Aish was doing the fishy stitch along. That was designed by Kim. But anyway, so I got a um, voucher to spend at Kim's site. So what I bought, I know some of you have seen a few bits of this, bits and pieces of this um, from Instagram, but um, I have somewhat added to my needle minder collection this month. It's becoming a bit of a sickness. But anyway, from Kim, I bought um, that needle minder, little owls, and that little needle minder with little birds. And I also bought um, a chart. Um, Kim's got some really nice tribal animal charts, which I've liked for quite some time. Um, so I chose, this is the one that I chose. It's a dragonfly chart, and I thought it would look really great stitched up in some of Michelle's silk threads, some of the new silk threads that I've been getting through the post lately. So big thank you for that stitcher, for that little rack, I really appreciated that. I always, I don't know if this is just me or everybody, but any time a stitcher, you know, racks me something or, you know, gifts me something or we do an exchange, I send them something, they send me something, you know what I'm talking about. I always remember, um, no matter how long that thread or fabric or chart has been in my stash, I always remember the stitcher that gifted it to me and, you know, those people are, are never forgotten. I'm the same with wedding presents. I could tell you, you know, all the stuff people bought us for wedding presents, who bought what. Um, because I just think, you know, it's really generous of people. It, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, somebody's thought enough to, to give me, buy me something. And also I think, especially with stitching things, um, whenever I use those things in a project, it always reminds me, makes me think of that stitcher and that little connection that we shared together. So, yes, thank you. You know who you are if you're watching for that um, little rack. I really appreciated it. 
Next, um, another stitcher, Nick this time. Um, she watches my videos. In fact, she's just got into floss cheap, which is a good thing. Nick has a blog called Stitching Obsession Cross. See, see, I should have looked this up. Obsessive Cross Stitcher. Anyway, I'll link below. I'm really sorry, Nick, if I got your blog name wrong. I can't think now. I look at it. You know, I've, I've been basically I've been following Nick's blog for quite a few years. Before I found Floss Tube, I well, I still do. I still read Stitcher's blogs. That was how um, I met other Stitchers online and got to know other Stitchers. Yes, so I've been following um, Nick's blog, and she had a little sort of a uh, little competition on her blog um, where she asked people to guess um, what she was currently stitching and I guessed so she very very kindly um, sent me some little things from her stash which is lovely um, I know that me and Nick have certain things in common when it comes to our stitching in that we both love purple and we like stitching similar designs um, she's stitching she is currently stitching some chatelaines and actually some of you without realising it, might be familiar with Nick's work. If you follow, um, if you're on the Facebook group for Northern Expressions Needlework, Nick was actually the model stitcher for Nicole's most recent release. I don't know if it's been released yet, but if, you've, if you're on that Facebook group, you would have actually seen Nick stitching because she was a model stitcher that stitched shades of orange. I think it's shades of orange. I should check these things before I start these videos which is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. It's stitched on 40 count linen, I think, so you know, not the easiest of materials to work with, and Nick did a fantastic job with it. So she's a lovely, fantastic stitcher. Um, and hopefully, we're hoping, me and Nick next year, we can do a little stitch along together because we both want to start plum pudding due to our love of purple. But anyway, I digress. Nick very kindly, from her stash, sent me some little threads and a piece of fabric for guessing her work in progress picture. So I'll just show you those and you know I think it's a, giving from your stash is a lovely thing to do also when you're giving away things you probably like as well because I know Nick likes purple so you know I would find it quite difficult to part with my purple threads so I really appreciate the fact Nick that you parted with some for me so this is a piece of beautiful fabric from the crafty kitten who I know Nick is a huge fan of and it's called Evening Sky it's on Belfast linen so that is absolutely gorgeous and to be honest, um, I don't know, it's not a limit, it can't be a limited edition. I don't know, I look at so much fabric, I forget what I have and haven't seen, but it's beautiful, really lovely, and I can see myself getting bigger pieces of that one. And she also sent me some lovely threads. So I've got Sparkle from Thread Picker's Silks, that's gorgeous. And actually a really lovely, pretty DMC. I know I can be quite snobbish about threads, I know that, I will admit that now. But um, never forget the variegated um, DMC threads because I know a lot of you don't like using hand dyed threads because you worry about colour fastness and things and obviously these are washable at 60 degrees. But that's so pretty, those colours, those lovely purple lilac colours. And very excitingly, she sent me a Crafty Kitten thread and weirdly I don't actually have any of Dawn's threads. I've got her fabric but I don't know why. I don't don't have any of her threads so that's really exciting I always like to get a new thread for my stash so big thank you to Nick for sending me those lovely things I really really appreciate that that was so sweet of you to do that for me next rack I received a message on Facebook from a lovely stitcher on the cross stitch and discuss two group which I know a few of us a lot of us are members of and out of the blue she messaged me to say um, she really enjoyed my videos, she enjoys watching floss tube videos but for whatever reason, we all know what YouTube is like she has found it really hard to sign up for you know, an account so that she could comment on videos so consequently she doesn't comment on any videos but she enjoys everybody's videos so she knew from my videos that I like stitching on linen now due to health reasons on her part she felt that she could no longer make use of the linen stash that she has accumulated and she wanted to be able to pass that on to other stitchers so she asked me, um, would you mind if I sent you some linen? To which I responded, well, you know, of course you can. <laughs> you know, whatever you feel um, fit to send me, whatever you'd like to give me, you know, that's so generous of you to think of me and to um, send me some of that 
that linen so I was so thrilled that she did that that was so sweet of her to think of me so um, last week I think I got another international parcel in the post which always creates much excitement in my house and I was just amazed when I opened the parcel because I mean I had no idea how much um, linen Patty Patty is the stitcher's name there are several Patties and Patricias on um, Cross Stitch and Discuss too, so you don't necessarily know who I'm talking about, but hopefully Patty's watching. She knows I'm talking about her. Yeah, so I opened this parcel from Patty and I was just amazed. Um, I never, I'm, whatever anybody sends me, I'm thrilled with. It doesn't matter what it is, it's just so lovely that people would think about me in that way. But what Patty's, Patty sent me was, I know some of you have seen this on Instagram, but she sent me all this fabric. I mean, it's all fabric that I use all the time. You know, it's a lot of 28 count white linen. But there's also some really lovely, there's a type of fabric I've not stitched on, Moran. And lovely sea sort of green, sea blue green colour, teal it says on there. And there's a lovely piece of jobberland and, and just lots of really lovely neutral colours. And, you know, if she'd sent me, you know, a little cut of linen that would have been like awesome you know I love getting things from other stitchers that have been in their stash that I can use and think you know and think about them when I stitch and use those materials but I was just amazed that that she sent me all that fabric I mean that's so so generous of you Patty to do that so I can't I really can't thank you enough for that and I was really quite I don't know I get a bit overwhelmed when people send me stuff because I have no idea what makes people think of me but I'm so grateful for that you know that was such a kind thing to do and she also put in some charts and a little kit so you know that was amazing so big thank you to you patty for doing that i really i can't i can't say enough how much i really appreciated your kindness and the fact that you thought of me to do that so that's that um i'm trying not to forget one more stitcher one more stitcher i have to thank I had a stitcher email me and say that she's had something in her stash for quite a few years and she had no idea what to do with it, what to do with these threads. And then she watched one of my videos and she saw how much I like these threads, so she wanted to send them to me. So I said, oh, okay. So I was anticipating a mystery pack in the post, which is quite exciting. And hoping that whatever it was that this stitcher sent me, I would actually know what it is and know how to use it. Which is always, you know, slightly daunting when people say they're going to send you mystery things. So I opened the envelope and I just couldn't believe what she sent me. Because I absolutely adore these silks. And I was just amazed that somebody would have these in their stash and actually part with them and send them to me. So I'll show you what they are. And hopefully if you've watched my silk video, you'll know. <laughs> you've been paying attention to me wittering on now. I wouldn't blame you if you hadn't. But this is what she sent me. These are all Gloriana silks in the same colour, but in the different types of silk. So there's... And the colour, the colour that these are in is absolutely beautiful. I've stitched with this silk, this colour of silk. I used it in butterfly lace. And it is... You, you won't... There's no way that the iPad can show up how gorgeous this silk is and the colour of this silk. As I've said before, I mean, I've got lots of threads, we all know that, but there's only so many colours in the world. And there's only so many combinations you can have. So sometimes a lot of the brands have colours that are very similar and similar looking. Um, but this particular colour is Deep Blue Sea, and it's one of those colours that I think is unique. I have never seen a better representation of this sea you know this sea green and sea blues in a thread ever and the fact that it's silk and the way that it shines this thread is just gorgeous you'd have to it won't see it's so not showing up on the screen at all you know this thread is beautiful so this stitch has sent me not only a skein of um stranded 12 stranded thread but there's also the luminescence there's also the princess petite pearl and there's also the Princess Pearl and, very excitingly, some silk ribbon. And it's really funny because I was only saying the other day that I needed some silk ribbon for a project because it's got some ribbon embroidery in, which I haven't, I mean, I have done, um, but I haven't got a supply of ribbon, but it's something that I'd like to do a bit more of. 
So I was just amazed when I opened that little parcel from that stitcher. The fact that she, you know, thought about me and thought to send them to me. I mean, that's just so, so generous. Really, really generous. And these threads are just so beautiful. And it's just so not coming up on the iPad. It's really one of those things you'd have to look at in real life. So to that stitcher, who I expect is probably watching, really big thank you. That was just so super generous of you and all of those those four stitches that I mentioned thank you so so much for those um, things that you sent me I appreciate every every single thing really really beautiful and really generous so those are my thank yous out of the way well not out of the way but I wanted to make sure I got them in first so that I didn't forget because it's really really important that those stitches know how grateful I am for those things they've sent me so, on to my acquisitions for the month. Um, as usual, there's quite a few threads, as I said, I'm not going to go through every single one. So, if you see a colour that you like the look of, and you want to know what it's called, just um, leave a comment and I'll let you know. So, thread-wise, first off, we have... I'm not going to show these because I'm pretty sure a lot of you have these in your stash already. But I had an order with Mo. In fact, I've got another one coming in the post. But anyway, these are the threads that I bought this month from Mo. Can you see them? Not surprisingly, a lot of them are purple. Not really very shocking. But, you know, I did branch out. There's a green one in there and, you know, blue, but that's got a bit of purple in. Oh, and the yellow. Yellow one, see? Not everything's purple. So those are my Mo silks. So I'm looking forward to using them. Then... Oh yeah, needle minders. I had a big problem with needle minders this month. So, as well as the two that um, I chose to use my racked gift voucher for, so the two from Kim, I also have this one, which um, I was enabled by Judith, Cross Stitch Judith. She posted um, on Instagram a picture of her needle minder, Dragonfly needle minder, which was a green one. Got itchy nose, sorry. And um, I just loved it. I mean, it's dragonflies, for goodness sake, and it's sparkly, so how could I resist? But this is from a Facebook group, which I will link to below. It's Cindy Hill's Facebook group. I um, can't remember off the top of my head exactly the name of the group. It's something like Moon Enchantress Cross Stitch Bling, but I will link below. So that's one needle minder. And the other needle minders I got, I put them all on here now. This is my magnetic, old magnetic chart board, I don't use anymore. But these four little needle minders here. This was from um, somebody, a stitcher I follow on Instagram. And she just, she put up that she just made them and was using them for her stitching. And I was like, ooh, fairy tales, I, I need to have some myself. So um, they were from her, Hope Springs. And I will link to her Facebook page because she sells... Um, bags and things that she makes as well and I know her needle mine is on a Facebook group Facebook page so if you like those cute little type of needle minders then I will link below and um, I can't remember what her Facebook business page is it's something like Hippity Hope Designs or something like that but I'll link below so yeah the needle minder board is growing somewhat although it's nowhere near as bad as some people's collection I know so yeah needle minders seem to be a bit of a theme in September Next, uh, threads again, obviously from Michelle at Jodie Designs. So these are my monthlies that I got this month. Oops. There they are. If you can see them there. My two favourites would have to be... I've already got a skein of this. Teal Appeal is one of them. I just think that's such a beautiful colour. It used to be um, a limited edition. It was a limited edition last year, I think. And Michelle sort of asked, I think she must have asked people, oh, if you could have one of the limited editions as part of the permanent collection, which would it be? And a lot of people chose this one, Teal Appeal. It's gorgeous. And my other favourite this month, obviously, is this one, whose name I can't say. This is why I don't read science fiction and fantasy books, because I, I can't say the names. Um, but I know... I don't know if Aisha's got these. I think you have, haven't you? You've read the books that they're based on, I think, or you have them. They're based on books by Shell Cook. This um, particular theme of threads. There's a few based on the book in this month's red pack. But yeah, those those two were my favourites this month. Although, obviously, I love them all. Um, 
the fabric for this month was gorgeous. If you've watched um, Gemma's, Gerra, Gerra 80's um, video, you'd already seen the fabric for this month. Um, the limited edition thread, I know Lucy's shown, but it's those were the colours, and it was called F Full Trees, so that's really pretty. And this is what my fabric came out like. It's actually the same as Gemma's, 28 count Brittany Opal, as is my standard, but it's just so pretty. Really, really pretty. Oh, it's coming up quite well for a change. So all of those thread colours that are encapsulated in that fabric is just beautiful and really, really usable piece of fabric. So I was thrilled with that. I was when I saw um, in Gemma's video, I was like, oh, that looks so pretty. I can't wait for mine to come. So I was thrilled when I got it. The other thing I've I got from Michelle was some more silks. Um, you know, she's doing an antique um, dyed silk. I've been, I am collecting those. So I'll just show you, I know Gemma's shown one of them already, um, so I'll just go through them quickly because you might not have seen these. This is um, China Set, this one is Bluebell Woods, and it's probably one of these threads that I'm going to stitch that dragonfly chart in from Kim because these are just too pretty really and it's about time I use them. This one is in Flanders Field, it's coming up a bit lighter on the iPad. Um, this one is lovely, it's called Sugared Almonds. I think one of the first sort of limited editions or threads that Michelle released was called Sugared Almonds. I don't have that one, so I was quite glad when she released a silk in those shades. And I think this one is my favourite out of those five. And this one's Brighton Beach. I love the sort of mauvey, sort of mauvey blues in it, I just think that's so pretty. And Michelle forced me, forced me, she did, to have a skein, buy a skein of um, peacock feathers in silk. I don't think it took much persuading for me to have that. Again, that's really beautiful. Dye's a bit lighter, but it's so pretty. So those, that is my stash from Michelle. Next, eBay purchases. I didn't go crazy on eBay, but I was quite excited because I got some new threads. Well, yeah. When I say when I say new threads, I mean threads from a different dyer. I do have this little idea that I would like to have a few skeins of thread from each of the dyers out there. Whether that happens or not, I don't know, but it's you know a fun goal to have. But there are all sorts of different dyers out there. Predominantly, the threads that I buy and most of us buy are aimed at cross stitches. So usually the people that dye the lovely threads for us are stitches themselves so they are dyed by stitches for stitches so they're normally six stranded cotton six stranded silk possibly if you're very lucky they might dye you some pearl cottons but um that's that which is which is fine you know there's so many so many people um dyeing threads out there now it's brilliant but there are other thread dyers out there who I've been particularly interested in having some of their threads in my stash because other people use threads, hand dyed threads, that aren't necessarily cross stitches. So these particular dyers aim, their market is for fibre textile artists, creative embroidery artists or creative embroiderers. Um, I love the idea of doing freehand embroidery. I know a few of you do do it. Um, I don't know if I've really got the talent or the creativity to do it myself, but I really appreciate, I love looking on Instagram, all those sort of different fibre artist pictures. I just find it really inspiring, although I can't do it myself. So, yes, so those particular dyers, yeah, they dye stranded cotton and pearl, but they also dye rayon, they dye different types of silk, different thicknesses, they dye chenille, they dye viscose, all sorts of fibres to be used in, you know, different ways, textile arts, etc. So one of those dyers is Steph Francis, I'll link to her website below, and I've really admired her threads for quite a long time, um, but funnily enough, some came up on eBay, and so I thought I would try and add them to my collection, so I was successful. So what I bought um, was some because apparently I didn't have enough, was some cotton number five pearl threads, and they're in really pretty colours. But the thing about, um, well, I don't know for definite, but I should imagine that it is true of most um, people that dye for that type of market. Their threads don't have fancy names, because we all know, as stitchers, 
how it influences us when things are named after special, our favourite themes, if they're Disney themed, if they're Harry Potter themed, if they're Lord of the Rings themed, if they're whatever it is, fountain themed, you know, we all, we want those things because of their name. Well, most of the fibre dyes out there don't faff about thinking up names, they just come up with letters or numbers. So, without further ado, here are the lovely hand dyed pearl threads, number five, number five pearl threads I got, and just to prove that they don't have fancy names, this is P523. So, you know, nothing fancy about that, but you can see why I, I had to have them, the colours, the colours are actually coming up very true to life, I mean that is just beautiful, and I just thought, if I'm going to do more hard anger next year, I would love to, um, you know, to incorporate some different threads and colours and things in my design so I was quite happy to get another dyer crossed off my list I have some representation of their threads in my stash but the other thing was the stitch the stitcher the seller who um, I bought those threads from she actually sent me um, a couple of extra threads in the post as, as well which I thought was really really sweet of her and really kind I mean I think this video is proof that stitchers are some of the most generous people out there so I got two really pretty skeins of um, anchor multicolour thread I like that, that one's really spring, makes me think of spring, really pretty. Yeah, so I like those, but also, I put this up on Instagram, some people got confused by it, I don't think they quite knew what it was. Um, another hand dyer that dyes more for, possibly more for the sort of fibre artist type um, people, is um, Jean Oliver, and her threads go by the name Oliver Twists. Um, she, they used to sell their threads through other suppliers, but now they have their own Etsy shop. So I will link below, just in case you know you're interested in different fibers like I am. And so what this eBay seller sent um, along with those pearls was this, which I don't think I'm ever going to use the fibers in this skein because it just they are just so pretty as they are. But I know my sister got confused. She's like, "How are you going to thread all of that in a needle?" But it's made up. It's lots when you unwind it, it's actually made up of lots and lots of different different fibres that you can use. So there's pearl threads in there, there's viscose threads, um, there's some different types of silk thread. I can never say the name of it, so I'm not going to attempt it. You know, chainette thread, viscose chainette threads, all sorts of lovely fibres in there. So again, another little thread person I can cross off my list. At least I have some sort of representation of their work in my stash. So yeah, I was really pleased with those threads from eBay. I'm going to try and not look at eBay for a few months. Save up my stash money for my thread organisation. So, that is almost everything apart from a crafty kitten order. So I got a few pieces of fabric from Dawn this month. I'll show you the two pieces of fabric and then I'll show you their super exciting order part of the order. This one is Belfast Linen, th well 32 count, I said that as Belfast Linen. It's called Fairy Forest and it is very representative of a forest where you would find fairies. It's a lovely light blue, more green than blue, very light sea. I don't know, I'm not very good, at, I can't think of how to describe colours today, but it's it's more green than it looks on the screen. But that is very fairly representative of the the distribution of the dye in the fabric. So that's really pretty. I haven't got any immediate plans for it right this second, but again, another really beautiful, usable piece of fabric. I can think of a lot of things that will go on it, though I've got nothing in mind at the moment. So yeah, that's that one. Fairy Forest. The next piece of fabric is called um, Jurassic Sands, and it's on 32 Camp Murano, or 32 Camp Lugana. This one I do have plans for. So it's just a really lovely neutral. So I'm very pleased to have that one. And my stash. Jurassic Sands was actually... Was a, I'm glad I got a little piece of it. I think it's... I don't think it was a second. The patterning on it might not have been quite to Dawn's liking, which is why she had it in her Facebook sale. These two pieces were from her Facebook sale that she does most months. Um, but it was actually a, a type of fabric I was considering to stitch... Um, Chatelaine on Serengeti, so I was quite glad I got a piece of it in my stash. But I do have, well, I have two plans just in case one plan doesn't work. 
but I have two plans for this fabric. One for a chart I have, one for a chart I don't have, but that a frost tuber has stitched up and I loved it. So there's two possibilities for that piece of fabric. But the most exciting package I got from Dawn at the Crafty Kitchen was that, as I mentioned, I think, at the beginning of my one of my videos at the beginning of the month, is that I paid off my layaway for my fabric and bits and pieces that I needed for red. My mirabilia that I'm going to be stitching for our mirabilia stitch along. So I know, um, just as a little reminder, I did say that I would in December, at the very beginning of December, be doing a sign up video. It's not an official sign up video. If you don't sign up, it doesn't mean anything, but it's just a way of everybody else knowing who is taking part and what they're stitching. If you don't sign up, it doesn't mean you can't stitch along, but the whole point of a stitch along is that we all know who's doing what so we can encourage each other. So stitch alongs, the more you put into them, the more you'll get out of them. That has been my experience in doing stitch alongs. So just a reminder, just to look out for that um, sign up video in December, if you'd like to sign up and let everybody else know what you're stitching. So I know you all know what red looks like, but I have the pattern in my little hands, so that's cool. I'll tell you what though, it does, you realise how spoilt you are comparatively um, if you're a Heaven and Earth design stitcher. The fact that you know exactly how many stitches of each colour you need, so you can work out what skeins, how many skeins and things you need. Because unless you really want to hunt through and figure out how much you need, sometimes I just think, oh, I'll just go and buy new skeins of all of it. Because there's nothing worse than running out of a skein and then buying it and realising the dye lot's changed or something. So I haven't kitted up the DMCs yet, I haven't raided my stash, but I will be obviously doing that before January the 1st. And I know Ace showed in her video um, the two water lily threads that go with it, cornflower, blue and midnight. I did find it quite, well I don't know, funny. That of all the threads to use in that mirabilia for silk, so they cho that um, these two were chosen, because actually, to my mind, you could very very easily substitute those for DMC. I mean, they are variegated in the sense of they go from a lighter shade to a slightly lighter, or in the case of this one, a darker shade to a slightly darker. But you know, there's not much in it. You could you could easily sub them out for DMC. I would have thought that if you were going to choose something to stitch in silk in that design it would be her cape, the red, you know, the red cape um, but I mean that, that's just me, I'm going to go along with how it's charted as tempting as it might be to do something about lack of silk in the cape um, but yeah that was just that was just my thoughts, I don't know I don't know how you, I don't know what you think about when you get threads, um, patterns that are charted with the odd silk here and there I don't always, I mean I love stitching with silks, you all know that, but I don't always think it's essential for the piece, you know, if I decided to change those out for two DMCs, would it really make that much difference to my finish? No, not really, I, I don't think so. But anyway, that's those, but most, oh yeah, and the beads, got the beads. I love these bead packs, it makes life so much easier when you can buy all the beads you need in one pack, and you don't have to go through adding loads of little pots of beads. Oh, bead update. Um, yesterday I did actually get around to filling up my bead organiser, Mackenzie's bead organiser, as it shall now be known, bead storage. I did that yesterday afternoon, so that was fun. There are a few gaps left, so hopefully they'll fit in, otherwise I need to buy another one and that's just not good. So, any exciting beads in here? I've got some ordinary size 11 beads, some glass, some size 8 beads. I did spy some evil petite beads in there somewhere. And there's just a few little treasures. Little flower, crystally things. So yeah, that's the beads. But the most exciting thing is the fabric. So, after much deliberation, I chose... Whew, not remembering yet. Winter Skies. There was a choice between two. There was Winter Sunset and Winter Skies that I think I was really interested in. And it is beautiful. I love it. And so I'm hoping she's going to look good on it. Um, but yeah, that's... So you can see it's got... It is a Winter Sky. It's got those darker patches and, you know, sort of dark um, 
grey greys patches going right the way through to light blue. At one point, I was, when I took a picture of it, of the stash, I was worried that this one might, this thread, might sort of fade away into the um, fabric, but I don't think it will because it's not really um, sort of touching the edge of the fabric. So, and also that, you know, because of the darker patches in it, I think it'll be fine. But, you know, I always get a bit like that when I'm using hand dyed fabric because you never quite know how it's going to turn out. No matter how many t hours you spend on the fabric viewer, until you actually stitch it, that's the only way you're going to know how it's going to look. So, yeah, that's exciting. So, I have to um, keep that stash to one side until January the 1st, until I can start on her. So, that's good. Right. I think I have mentioned everything, she says, looking around at all this mess in front of her. Yeah, so a good stash month, I think, uh, enhanced by some very generous stitches who parted with some of their stash and who kindly decided to send it to me, so that's that's good too. So as I say, this is going to be my last, this is going to be my last stash video. I don't think I'm going to do any more until next year. Um, which of course doesn't mean that I won't be watching all your stash videos because I still like to see everybody else's stash. And it isn't to say that I won't be buying threads because obviously I still have my Jodie Designs threads. But I'm just conscious of um, wanting to get things organised and sorted and getting my stash organised in a way that pleases me will do that. Because I must say when I sorted out my beads yesterday... It was so nice to see, to have everything in front of me, to be able to see it. And I think that's the key. And I think that's um, what triggered off this whole thought process into reorganising my stash. When I listened to um, Mackenzie's video, she did a video. Um, it was a tag for her Project Pan makeup um, challenge that she's doing. And it was a questionnaire and in it somewhere, I cannot quote exactly Mackenzie, but the gist of it was, I think you said that you got... you. You changed your makeup storage, you organised it, you bought new makeup storage. And so you could organise all your makeup so you could see exactly what you had and could use it more efficiently, which is what Project Pan is helping you to do, I guess. And when um, I heard Mackenzie say that, I thought, oh, that is that is what I need to do. Because I've not been ha I'm not happy with my thread storage. As I say, it was just a temporary measure and my my um stash has grown ridiculously so it needs to be sorted and I know I'll just be happier when I can see all the threads that I have and use them more fully and get my stash working for me in a much better way um, so a sad part of me is quite excited at the thought of organising all my stash again and you know remembering what I actually have I think I mentioned in my did I mention in my road stitch tutorial that I came across um, a whole batch of um, number 12 pearls in my stash that I'd completely forgotten about. I'm looking over here because this is where they are. I'll just show you. I think yeah, so they weren't, I hadn't bagged them and tagged them at that point. They were sort of in a bag all together, but there's, you know, quite a lot of thread in there that I'd actually forgotten about, so I do need to get on and um, sort those things out and I think it'll be helpful for Operation Threadpool next year. So, there you go, that's me, enough of my waffling, I can't believe I managed to talk for that long again. But there we go, that is my my stash acquisition for the month of September. So, thank you for watching if you have made it through this far to my very rambling videos lately. Um, yeah, so that's everything. And again, I keep saying it, but really huge thank you to those stitchers that sent me things this month. It's so, so kind of you and really generous. There we go. That's my stash. So I look forward to seeing what the rest of you have got up to this month in your stitching and in your stashing. And I will just say thank you for watching and to all of you that keep subscribing. Um, I don't know how you managed to find me, but um, big thank you. And all of you, you know, we've got a great community on of FlossTube, on YouTube and on Instagram. There's a lot of us that are quite active on Instagram and it's quite nice to see people's daily stitching and to know that when you're stitching 
wherever you are, other people are stitching wherever they are, and we're all doing something that we really enjoy doing, so that's really good. So there we go. So what's left for me to say is thank you for watching and happy stitching.